In 1983, EDSD made headlines when Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip visited St. Paul's Church. Thousands of San Diegans lined the streets to receive the royal couple. Tickets were required to attend the service, most of which were given to St. Paul's members. The Reverend James Carroll, rector of St. Paul's at the time, reportedly said, I dreamed of preaching at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and it never happened, probably never will, but this was better. Two years later, in 1985, St. Paul's was consecrated as the Episcopal Cathedral of San Diego. In fact, St. Paul's ministry began over a hundred years before becoming a cathedral. On the evening of Friday, November 26, 1869, Reverend Sidney Wilbur welcomed congregants into the church residence, where they organized themselves as the parish of the Holy Trinity. In 1885, the people of Holy Trinity wanted to express the new energy of the church and were granted permission from convention to change it to St. Paul's. The third rector, the Reverend Henry Resterick, said, when I arrived in 1882, San Diego was a dead town. It had a population of about 2,000 people, and at the intersection of the principal streets, three of the four store buildings were empty. It wasn't long before the people of St. Paul's began a campaign to build a new church space. On Good Friday, 1887, the last service was held in the old church. That evening, the seats were removed, and on Saturday morning, with great effort, the new church building was made ready. It was reported that strenuous efforts were made to clear out the new building, to tack cloth on the unglazed windows, and to put in seats made of the old pews and planks resting on empty coal oil boxes. The first service was held in the new building the next morning, April 10, 1887, Easter Sunday. In 1905, naval vessels rarely visited San Diego, but in July, the USS Bennington steamed into the bay. While lying at anchor, its boilers blew up, the explosion and escaping steam killed or injured over half the crew. John Sehan, mayor of San Diego and treasurer of St. Paul's, jumped into action. Just two days later, St. Paul's clergy conducted the burial of 47 men at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery on Point Loma. It was around this time when St. Paul's was beginning to consider a new location for the church. On October 20th, 1919, the parish purchased a site of five lots facing Fifth Avenue Nutmeg Street, and 6th Avenue, directly opposite Balboa Park. These lots cost $25,500. The faithful continued to worship in their church for nearly 30 years while the congregation raised funds, imagined, and built the new church. In 1948, St. Paul's sold their church property to move to the new Nutmeg Street location. The deciding factor for selling their old property was the moving of their old church. The 60-year-old church was cut into 10 manageable sections and moved to its new site. We are fully persuaded that a student chapel should be provided in the near future to be located just beyond the campus of the new state college. That college is now known as SDSU. On Christmas Eve 1948, lit by car headlights from the parking lot, the first service in the chapel of St. Dunstan's was celebrated. St. Dunstan's became the first parish in the city for college students. Years later, the church was divided into pieces and moved again, this time to Lemon Grove. Today, this historical church building serves the people of St. Philip's, a vibrant Latino congregation with regular services in Spanish. It seems that everywhere you look, EDSD has made an impact. In the early 1980s, when the AIDS epidemic struck the gay community, Susan Jester, now a notable Episcopalian, used her organizing skills and political experience to raise awareness, calm public fears, and secure critically needed money. Mobilizing gay people and numerous straight allies, Susan helped produce the first AIDS walk in San Diego. In 2017, St. Paul's officially partnered with San Diego Pride in continued support of its LGBTQIA neighbors. Light Up the Cathedral marks the beginning of Pride Week in San Diego every year. And to this day, San Diego is the only pride celebration in the country that begins with an interfaith service in a cathedral. What I want you all to leave with tonight is to know that you are indeed beloved. Under the leadership of the esteemed Dean Penelope Bridges, St. Paul's Cathedral continues to reach new heights. The 1990s was a radical decade. In the Episcopal Diocese of San Diego, it was a time of living by example. In 1991, an arsonist set fire to St. David's Episcopal Church in Claremont, 
the church was completely destroyed. Remarkably, after the fire stopped burning, the cross hanging above the altar remained untouched by the flames. The Reverend Susan Tobias, St. David's rector at the time of the fire, visited the arsonist in jail and acted as their counselor. One Sunday in the mid-90s, the arsonist came to the rebuilt St. David's for worship, stood in the chancel, then apologized for his act. The once distraught congregation gathered around him and tearfully embraced him. Forgiveness flowed. Jesus Christ was present, and the once church arsonist continued as a welcomed member of the congregation until he moved from the area. Three years later, St. John's in Chula Vista met a similar fate. In April of 1994, an arsonist set the church ablaze. The fire led the local CBS 8 news cycle when it was reported there wasn't much the recovery effort because there wasn't a whole lot to recover. This fire burns so hot, even the stone walls have come down. St. John's rector at the time, Michael Carr, visited and forgave the arsonist. Today, after celebrating over 100 years of ministry, St. John's in Chula Vista is rebuilt and better than ever. Led by the Reverend Roger Hankey, St. John's has a thriving partnership with Episcopal Community Services, offering a Head Start program that serves 140 children. Everyone here is waiting for the same thing, the stroke of midnight. Remember Y2K? I don't. I wasn't even born yet. Blockbuster was still the place to rent a DVD. American Online took a backseat to other rising internet companies. Climate change became a common concern. And the September 11th attacks, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, changed the world forever. San Diego's Church Times reported that on the day of the attacks, a businessman noticed the doors of Holy Cross Carlsbad were propped open. He went in and said, I need a place to pray. May I come in? He was welcomed. Another woman, walking down Fifth Avenue, wandered into St. Paul's Cathedral and said, This feels like the place I should be on a day like this. Around that time, homelessness throughout Southern California was on the rise, and the people of St. Albans in El Cajon stepped in to help. In May 2002, St. Albans decided to install a portable toilet on their property for public use. The city eventually bowed to St. Albans' pressure, passing an emergency resolution to provide a cold weather shelter. The rector, in full vestments, led a procession to the new city shelter. In EBSD, we believe everyone deserves a place to feel safe and to call home. Today, EBSD is helping congregations consider how they could use underutilized property to address the housing crisis across our region. EDSD's Mission Real Estate Group is helping churches assess their properties for both housing and other mission-focused uses. And with 14 churches at different stages of the process, we're off to a good start. The Episcopal Diocese of San Diego continued to welcome refugees from war-torn areas around the world. In Africa, the Second Sudanese Civil War continued to rage. Over 20 years ago, droves of refugees from the Sudan began arriving in San Diego. More than 3,600 of the Lost Boys of Sudan came to the United States. One Sunday, after visiting other churches in the area, a Lost Boy came to St. Luke's Episcopal Church in North Park, where he was warmly welcomed by the predominantly Anglo community. He said, Because you welcomed us, we will fill this church one day. Over 20 years later, the people of St. Luke's in North Park delight in the diversity of their congregation. With many Sudanese and Congolese American members, it is a place where the intersection of differences is celebrated as a wonderful gift. At the beginning of the 21st century, the people of St. Luke's felt called to serve and established St. Luke's Refugee Network as a ministry. Now over 20 years old, the program has grown into RefugeeNet, an independent nonprofit that works closely with St. Luke's. RefugeeNet provides food distribution, after-school tutoring, case management, and job development for Arabic, Karen, and Swahili-speaking former refugees and their families. St. Luke's and Refugee Net continue to be the welcoming face of Jesus Christ for those who fled for their lives to a new country, a new city, a new community. Our community.
At dusk on October 25th, 2003, the largest fire in California's history was started. Fueled by hot Santa Ana winds and dry brush, it burned from Ramona to Cuyamaca, Julian to Escondido, Scripps Ranch to Lakeside, and Mount Lagoon. The Cedar Fire scorched 687 square miles, destroyed 2,232 homes, and killed 15 people in San Diego. The sky was painted brown with ash for weeks. Hot spots continued to burn for over a month. St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Ramona became an informal evacuation shelter as fire victims gathered and made plans. Parishioners brought food, clothing, blankets, and other things that people might need as they fled their homes. Several people loaned their RVs to house families who'd lost everything. More than 300 homes around Camp Stevens in Julian were burned. Our camp was quick to house families in their cabins. Because the Red Cross is set up to aid those who are displaced but not homeless, those who'd lost their homes were left without support. This is where Episcopal Community Services stepped in to fill the gap. ECS provided assistance to those without a clear path forward with food, clothing, phone cards, housing, and transportation. In the end, St. Francis Palma Valley, St. Albans El Cajon, St. Mary's Ramona, St. Barnabas Borrego Springs, Christ the King Alpine, St. Timothy San Diego, Camp Stevens Julian, and St. Bartholomew's Poway were directly affected by the fire. None were damaged, but all were places of prayer and centers for pastoral care.